We've come back on top of the order, I believe. Kept things. I don't think nice I've heard Chris neat. yet. He, he's here. back. Um, but yeah, I'm here. Okay. Yeah, Chris is here. The last. So, one. I believe it's my turn. Yes. Yes. Okay, then I what I will shall do then is, I will. Go ahead and close. And take a swing. Just punch me in the face. <laughs> at the space there and okay. see what happens. And your hand passes through empty air. Well, anything that would have been there would have been hit with a 20, but yeah. Attack um, the darkness. Yeah, I do attack the darkness. Uh, uh, Victor, we're 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 throwing science at the wall and seeing what sticks here. So I'm sorry. I I'm think it's in my head. I'm gonna take a swing at. I'm gonna take a swing at Victor. Hey, Victor. Did you does hurt 14 me? Hit you? Uh, no, a fourteen does not hit me. Okay. Could I let um, a 14 hit me? You could just choose to be hit. If you just... Yeah, I'm going to choose to be hit. Okay. Um, then... Science experiment. Very science. Oh, whew. Um, Victor, that's... Uh... God, I cannot math today. Eight points of bludgeoning damage. I need Victor, a robot. You take four points of that. Okay. Hmm. Hey, that's great. So you still got tip hit points. No, my tip HP is about uh, gone. Um, yeah, flurry of blows. Let's go. I wow. feel like Edmund is the only character who can actually safely do this because, like, if I hit him, I could do a ton of damage. I, I thought about stabbing myself and realized that'd be a bad idea. Victor, does a sixteen hit you? Uh, right on the nose, yes. Then a 21 will hit you as well. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I have five points of bludgeoning damage from the first hit on the flurry. Okay, okay. so Victor, you take two of that. And, uh, nine points from the second hit on the flurry. Victor, you take four of that. I want to point out, we don't actually know if this is damaging the creature. Now... As you're sitting here punching Victor, <laughs> every impact is causing uh, lacerations across his, his body and his face, far in excess of what you would imagine. Usually if you punch someone really hard, they'll bruise up. But no, he is pouring blood from the side of his face and down his neck as you pull your fists away. And your fists, your knuckles are covered in it. Yeah, it's, it's okay, it's not mine. Guys. This don't cost cuts, guys. I guess worth pointing out that all of this blood is also glowing with fairy fire. Okay, yeah, that would do it. <laughs> so Victor is also kind of glowing with fairy fire, in a manner of speaking. Uh, admit, moving or staying put? I'm good here. Okay, who's next? Sorry, Victor. Uh, let's see here. So Orson. after that, we've got... Mo uh, Orson with Evie on deck. Vic Victor will poke his head out and tap his chin and look at Orson and nod. All right. Nope. Orson decapitates Victor. He's like, what? He told me to. Uh, Orson is not going well. Can you just punch me? It's non-magical. Do we have the capacity uh. to put... Victor back up when we're done, or are we just gonna like leave Victor dying on the floor when this is over? This all this whole plan depends on Ekin. <laughs> right now it's anyway. Orson's turn. Uh well, I guess Orson's gonna shrug at the uh and stab Victor, I guess. <laughs> With his magic spear. Like he's like grimacing. <clears throat> but like, okay. That's a natural one. Uh, that is a... You're going to let me... You're going to fail the hit, right? Yeah. So as long as I don't roll... As a roll don't roll a natural one. Okay. Uh, that is... Plus five. That's nine points of magical piercing damage. Victor, you take four of that. 
And then the butt. It's a 12 to hit. That's fine. Uh, that's eight points of magical bludgeoning damage as he cracks you on top of the head, I guess. You can take four of that as well. And I mean, Victor, you're, you can feel the impact of all of the blows, and every blow is causing you to bleed profusely. As Orson steps back with the butt, I mean, the spatter of blood on the back of his spear is way more than the impact of that blow should have elicited. And it's all glowing in the light of air. Orson, moving or staying put? Uh, Victor, you still had a reaction. You have not used uh, your reaction, yeah. correct? I have not taken it yet. Make a charisma check. That's a check, not a saving throw. Um, 15. Okay. Who's next? Oh, let's see here. After Victor, we've got... Uh... No, it's darker Orson. purple with Orson. tech on on deck. Evie, 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 I'm sorry, right after, yeah, because Victor just keeps not doing anything. Vi uh, we've got Victor, Orson. Victor. We've got Evie with Victor on deck. All right, e Evie. Victor vigorously shakes his head no at you. <laughs> <laughs> What's your health at? Uh, thirty-two out of fifty-five. I mean, yeah, I... looking at him, getting an assessment of how much damage he's taken, he looks like he's bleeding from every possible orifice. His face is just. His hair is matted to his face with blood. If he if he were bleeding this much under normal circumstances, you would think it was a crisis situation. Yeah. I'm not going to stab Victor. I would do too much damage to him. What I'm going to try and do instead... I walk through this space, does anything happen? Yeah. Nothing happens when I walk through there? Nope, nothing happens. Okay. I'm going to try stabbing the blood that's on the wall here. Okay. And oh, some of it has warmed its way down to the floor and you know that there weren't blood spatters on the floor before but there are now and you hunch down with your knife and you or your dagger and you stab downwards at it uh -huh. you feel the impact of your stone your knife against the stone floor yeah, nothing happens nothing happens all right uh let's see bonus action who's next uh victor's next i think okay i'm not gonna give it bonus action to I guess I'll give it to Genie. Okay. I'll move back here, and that's the end of my turn. Victor's up next, yes? Uh, Victor, yeah, with dark purple. Victor, make a charisma check. This is a check, not a saving throw. That's uh, only an 11. Victor, I can trust you to answer a question honestly, right? Yeah. Even if it means one of your fellow players has a bad day? Oh, of course. Especially. Let's say right now, Victor wanted to use an action to cause as much damage as he possibly could in one action. What would you say he would do? If he wanted to cause as much damage as possible... To any, of your, would, to any of these, any of the other people standing in the room. He would go try and kill Ekin, because Ekin heals and does big fire damage. Okay, so you can move... Uh, I can get there in 15 feet. Uh, Evie, Victor's leaving your threat range. Is he looking like he's about to go kill Ekin? It looks like he's just leaving your threat range. <laughs> That's all, all you get for now. Okay, um, I won't... I won't stay... Again, I don't want to... I would do too much damage to Victor. Okay. So he's entering Orson's threat range. Orson's going to take the reaction and bonk him. Yeah, sure. All right. <laughs> I mean, that's what we were doing, right? It's just a yeah. 12. I can do... Until Evie decided not to. I mean, yeah, it's a 12 to hit. Uh, if, if I can let him hit, I will. But I don't know if no, I can. No, so it's not going to a lot. <laughs> so 12 like, doesn't oh, hit the Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, so leaving Orson. Well, Orson doesn't have a reaction anymore. Uh, what's on the ground here? The turret? Yeah, it's 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 just it's a tiny creature, gotcha. so it doesn't. Okay. It... And it would have to leave Edmund's threat range. Uh, Goody, Victor, I'm gonna take that if you're letting me. Well, no, he's not leaving your threat range. He doesn't have to to hit Ekin oh. from here. <clears throat> okay, I thought you said it did. I thought you said he did. Hmm. Uh, no, he would if he would take one more step, but he doesn't have to take that step. Yeah. What you doing, buddy? 
Victor. I rolled a 19, yes. so add the relevant attack bonus with a dagger. Uh, that'd be a 27. So it's a 27 to hit Ekin. Yeah, that hits. Uh, Victor, what's the damage on that? Does he get a sneak attack? None of uh, us are his ally no, right now. None of us are your ally at the moment. <laughs> It's it's a D six plus four. I'm going to I I'm not going to ask this stupid question because it is outside of our favor. Ekon, six points mm -hmm. of magical dagger damage. Is it psionic when you attack with like that? Uh, yes, it is. Okay, so it's six points, six of, points psionic. of psychic damage. Uh, Give me a second here. As yeah, Victor just steps forward with his knife and plunges it into you with his hand. Uh, so, all right, let me make my concentration on fairy fire. Like so, this thing, so this thing doesn't use his dark powers check, or okay. Or oh, that's a bonus action to activate that. Yes. Uh, Victor, you have fifth. You only have fifteen feet of movement, and you may only make a bonus action. You cannot take an action this turn. As a bonus action, you can try to repeat the Constitution saving throw. Uh, yeah, let's do that. Okay. Too bad my sonic dice don't work for it. The uh, 14? 14. It's Victor, you concentrate for a moment as you, you you feel the psychic dagger in your hand that you just stabbed Ekin with, and your head is swimming from the blows that have been raining down on you. And you feel it creeping up the back of your throat, and you decide to just lean into it, and you expel it with this bloody horrible cough that splatters against the wall behind you and partially onto Ekin's armor and there's a lot of light in this room yes yeah yeah i think we have all the light sources marked and for a moment you just feel like your head is swimming and you still have 15 feet of movement if you like Kill it. Uh, do we have any passive perception in the room that beats? I'm gonna say a, tw I'm gonna say an 18. With yes, I, I have a 19. Victor's got 18. Ekon, you are. Oh, and Victor, you are both. Even though there's so much illumination in the room, you're both aware of this very vague, dim red light, in the space where Victor just expelled this bloody cough. That's, that's it for Victor. Who's next? For Victor, we have Dark Purple followed by Akon. Well, Dark Purple already took its turn. Okay. So, Akon, you know the presence is in this room, though you cannot see it. All the blood is still glowing, yes? Uh, yeah. Okay. I kept the concentration set. Check. So I can't see it, so I can't uh, target it with a spell that requires me to see it. Uh, unless you can try targeting the blood, is probably the best you could do. Um, actually, I think the best I could do. Let me look up one spell real quick. That also requires sight. Uh, yeah, all of my spells require sight. And attack rolls on the blood would be in melee, which are terrible. Normally I know exactly what I want to do, but not right now. Um, how bad is... Uh, how bad is Victor beaten up? <laughs> He's at 32 out of 55. But he looks like oh, I know what I would carry. Want. He looks like okay, he's been I know doing what I want to do. <laughs> um, right. Yeah, obviously. Okay. I'm going to raise my holy symbol because this actually does not require sight. And every creature that I... Every hostile creature within 30 feet of me must make a DC 17 constitution saving throw and any magical feat is channeled. Uh, you cut out on me there, so I'm not sure what happened, but both... I need a DC seventeen. 
Con okay. So that is 2d10 plus 8 radiant damage. And any magical darkness in thir within a 30 foot radius of me spelled. No, just regular darkness uh, around here. So that'll deal. <clears throat> 22 radiant damage. Okay, bear with me just one moment. What's Orson's passive perception? Not a perception. Uh, 10. 10? Okay. No, 13. But still, not Echo, great. You are aware of the red light in the room is no longer there. And for a moment... You hear the padding sounds of drops of blood hitting the floor in front of you. You're not sure where they've originated from, but the light has faded away entirely, and all that's left is this pooling, slowly congealing blood. Also, the fairy fire glow dissipates, since there's no longer a creature for it to attach to. I think I got it. Are we Maybe. still on initiative? Uh, yeah, actually. Okay. Uh, do I, have a bonus? I don't know how many other bonus. Uh, that's it for me. Got uh, Genie with uh, Edmont on deck. Uh, Genie is. Not really much Genie can do. You can wipe Victor's face off. It's got quite a lot of blood on it. Uh, I don't have... Uh... Empathy? I don't, I don't have that can cantrip. First Victor walks into the cube, and then now this. I don't have prestidigitation. Otherwise, you know. Okay. Uh, I'm going to... Is there any... Uh, I'm going to peer in here. Is there any glowing blood still in this room? The blood's no longer glowing, but yes, it's still pooling up on the wall and the floor, as you'd expect. All right. Well, i tell you what. I'm going to do... You said... So there's blood in this room, right? Yep. Quite a lot of it spattered across the back wall, and it's now pooling up along the cracks in the floor. It's pooling. It's no longer moving. Right. Oh, okay. So I'll say that it looks like this is all whatever. And let's see. And then just stay right here and then move the turret here. And pulse it. I'll just dodge for my action. Very good. Who's next? Uh, that's eight tip hit points to everybody but me. I've got Edmont with lighter purple on deck. Edmont, fix it. Walk into here. Okay. When you walk into here... Aaron staring right at that curtain you see that the curtain uh is moving at the base as though something had fluttered it and you see some blood seeping down the wall underneath it where there was none before i'm going to Step here and throw my fist against the wall. Just punch the wall? Yep. Yeah, I'm going to punch. Yeah. Okay. Roll the hit. Roll at disadvantage because you can't really see what you're punching back there. Yep. That's probably going to be uh yep, that's going to be a nine, ten to hit. Ten will not hit. Ow! There's another one in here, Edmont calls out. Yeah, you just crack your knuckles against the far back wall. <sighs> Somewhere in here. Uh, key point to dodge. Okay. Because <laughs> I think I know what's about to happen. Lighter purple with uh, Orson on deck. Uh. Dodging makes this harder. Yeah. That Ooh, was the point. Still good rolls, though. I might not need both of them. Uh, Edmont. Sir. I have a 19 to hit. That gets it. Eight points of necrotic damage. 
Ow. And please make me a constitution saving throw. Bandit does not like constitution saving throws. Be right back. That's a failure. Okay. Then the second hit becomes immaterial. And we'll move... Oh, it's already in place right after Edmund. That's handy. This one's dead. Hang on. Can Edmund see me from where he's standing? Uh, I'm going to say no because he was punching the wall. Okay. So the back of his head is facing you. He could peer around that corner from that square, but that's not what he was doing. Uh, so that's going to bring us to Orson, I believe. Uh, Does Edmund know what just happened to him? I think we have a good idea. I mean, he's he's dealing with doggo stuff right now. (laughs) And you know what? I can sympathize. Apologies. Sorry about that. Uh, So, I'm sorry. I I, I missed everything after I failed the saving throw. Well, that's what's happened happened so far. It's not does Orson's Edmund know what? Does Edmund know enough that he can tell Orson to punch him? I'll let Edmund make that decision if he wants to tell Orson to punch him. Yes, punch me. Uh, okay, he punches Edmund. So that's just, an unarmed just, attack roll. Just, just straight up right cross. Like there's <laughs> a like there's an announcer in the background that goes cross counter. Nice. Uh, that's an eight to hit. But if he's letting it go, then it's just like, what, five points of damage? It's one plus his strength mod. Which is five. So yeah, it's up, up, up to Edmund if he wants to allow that eight to hit or not. Absolutely. But so, it's like, it's not magical. It's not ma- Oh, that's right. It's not magical. Uh, so Edmund, you take four of that. Owie. And again, Orson's not as adept at throwing punches as Edmund. It's not his forte. But where he's punched you right cross the side of your face it's like he was it's like he his uh he was wearing a punch dagger and he just scoured the skin off of your face that's how badly it's bleeding all of a sudden is that it for orson uh wait a second second he's got two attacks oh oh no uh that's a 23 to hit uh, that hits regardless. Five, it, yeah, no, for five more points of damage. Five more? Five, yeah. I was just mainly just seeing if I rolled a one or a 20. Five more or eight more? Five. Okay. Five. Uh, so, anyway, you take two of that. Well, if it's not magical, then I would take four, yeah. It's not magical. Is that it for Orson? And that is it for Orson. Okay. Yeah. Who's next? Well, actually, no, he's going Ed to. Edmont is bloodied. Okay, we've got five, uh, 10, 15, Evie with yeah, no. Victor on deck. I don't think I should hit him. I'm trying to think if there's anything I could do to keep him from hitting us when it's his turn. You have the off button switch. Can you make him uh, that's real a little asleep. excessive for this situation? The yeah, off button switch. Can you make him reroll a save somehow? I wanted to do that, but he has to be able to see me. And he, Bikra said he can't see me from where he was standing. Not from that position, because he was attacking that back curtain. But I will move up here so that when he makes it on this turn, uh, he can see me. If you physically move into the room, then uh-huh. he can see you in that position there. Yeah, so I will stand there. Next to the altar? Yeah. Uh... Oh, yeah, this is an altar, isn't it? Mm-hmm. You can stand there. There's enough space. Okay. okay. Um, I just don't often have Ravenloft games where people willingly stand right next to creepy altars. Well, I mean, we're House Veritas. We see creepy altars all the time. <laughs> we're House Veritas. We, we're a creepy altar is, a, is an opportunity. <laughs> like I eat creepy altars life. for breakfast. Is that it for Evie? Uh, I think so. I can't use... I guess I could poison Edmund, but that seems too cruel. <laughs> By cruel, do you mean funny? Yeah, I'm right. not going to poison Edmund. It's, it would only be funny if it happened to Victor. Uh, Victor with Ekon on deck. Victor, you have your full movement, and you can use 
your bonus action and action as normal this turn. So Victor will. You know what's happening, Victor. <laughs> yep. Victor's going to come here. Oh, well. I and he's going to say... So, he doesn't have to do sneak attack damage, right? No, it's your choice if you want to okay. do sneak attack or not. He's going to say, sorry, Edmund, but it's for the best. And he's going to stab Edmund without sneak attack. Okay. You want me to roll the hit? Well, yeah, because if you roll a one, you miss regardless of what he wants. Yeah. Oh, it's a one. <laughs> oh, what? Well, wow. Won. After the 40 crits you guys got in the first half of this session. It's okay. We're going to offhand attack. <laughs> Yeah. Off of the distance, like the, the meatball parade is starting. <laughs> right, that's a four. That's a eight. So it's up to Edmund if he wants oh, look to. Look at that. That, that hits. That whole look, and eight hits. Even though he's dodging. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you only take one point of sonic damage. So yeah, you take that one point of sonic. Edmund takes the one point. Is that it for Victor? Uh, yeah. All right, who's next? Uh, Ekon. Ekon, uh, so Ekon may need an exorcism. Move into the room, and he is going to ready an action that if he sees that uh, one of those shadow things get forced out of his brother, he's going to cast him. Or he thinks the thing is. It's not really a shadow thing. A shadow thing would have... A dark red light thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what's your passive perception? 19. Okay, you'd be able to see it if it did emerge then. Yeah, I've been able to pick these out. Uh, that's it for Ekon. So now we've got Genie with uh, Edmont on deck. Genie, shoot him. And 15, 20, 30. All my movement... Uh, well, I wasn't going to get anybody, but Victor moved right there, so I'm sorry, Victor. Maybe Victor still has the thing in him, you don't know. Maybe Victor, yes, yeah, Victor still has the thing. He's already stabbed Ekon once. Like, we better do it just to be sure. And you sure. just watched him stab Edmund, so. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. Uh, I'm going to cast, uh, <laughs> Thunder Wave. Okay. Centered oh. in front of me. All right. So What's the best saving I need, throw here? It's a con you need a DC seventeen Constitution saving throw. Ooh, Did you do a deck save? That, and this hits Victor as well. Yes, it does. Oh look at that! <laughs> oh look at that! Edmont failed. Uh oh! I rolled a twenty. I passed. That's I'm good. going to use my earring to maximize this one. So that is. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> look at sixteen. Yeah. 16 I've been points. looking for a good opportunity to do that. I just hadn't <laughs> run into one, really. Uh, 16 <laughs> points of thunder damage, which you can half if you made the save. Uh, You're not the one that's Edmund. possessed, Genie. Edmund, go ahead eight and take 8 points. of that. Yes. <laughs> oh, I figured it would, it would, they would both apply. That's why I did, this, did the spell slot. Victor's bloodied. <laughs> uh, Genie, moving or staying put? Edmund's getting I more used bloodied. All, I used all my movement. Okay, so who's um, next? Uh, that's me. Uh, next up is, yeah. Edmund, Edmund, I need you to make yep. a charisma check. This is a check, not a saving throw. Uh, well. Okay. Uh, ten? Ten is not good enough. Reroll it. I can let you reroll an ability check. That's, a, <laughs> that's a, as a reaction? Yeah, he has okay. to spend his reaction. Or no, actually, this doesn't cost me anything. He just does it. Hey, that's another ten. Another ten, okay. <laughs> Edmund. Well, I, I tried. Let's say in a single action, so not a not an action plus bonus action, just your action. Uh, if you were going to do as much damage as you possibly could to somebody in this room, what would Edmund do? Well, good news is I burned out my last key point dodging last turn, so I can't do a whole lot, but I can beat the crap out of my brother. So you just gonna start beating on Ekin? Yeah. So with an action, that's only that's two attacks. Is that correct? That's two attacks. Yes. Does any other martial arts stuff would require you to use a bonus action? Correct. Uh, I can use my bonus action. Uh, my bo yeah, the bonus action uh, feature only requires me to have used a key point in the course of my right. Turn. But it does require a bonus action. It's not part yeah. of the attack. Yeah. Thing. You just attack, attack an extra attack. All right. 
Yeah, yeah honest, I would. I, I kind of expected you to punch Genie in the face. Uh, Ekin. Yeah, I rolled two fives. I'm gonna with uh, your... I put an eleven and an eleven. So two elevens. Yeah. As your brother turns around and starts pummeling you with these bloodied fists. Yeah, I just put my shield up. And the hammer comes down on the shield. Uh, Edmonds. Sir. You have half your movement, which is 20, I think. Or 30. How much movement uh, do you 40. have? You have 40, uh, 40 so 20. So you have access to 20, and you can only use bonus actions. You can, however, use a bonus action to try to repeat that constitution saving throw. I will absolutely try to use that constitution... Repeat that constitution saving throw. Okay. Oh, wow. Ooh. Mm-mm-mm. That's a 20, sir. Uh, so I think that triggers Ekans held action. Held action because you have your passive is high enough to perceive the glow in a room with bright light. So I'm gonna need a uh, DC 17 dexterity saving throw that cover doesn't apply to. How about a four? No. So that's 14 radiant damage. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and pass that save. Oh, sure. So does it do half damage or just none? No, it's a cantrip. Okay. Uh, Edmund, you still have movement, if you like. Uh, yeah, I'm good. I'm good where I'm at. So is uh, light purple done? Yep, that's both of them cashed out. Got Orson with uh, Eevee on deck. Uh, Orson's like, oh, suddenly I'm crowded in here. <laughs> Yeah, Orson can't do anything. Hey, yeah, he can. He can move. He has a reach weapon, doesn't he? No, he didn't. He's got a spear. Oh. Uh, unless, uh, unless he's, he can he go through this square? Oh yeah, absolutely. There's nothing there. That's just where the oh. light is the brightest, and I don't even think Orson can see the light. I think right. only Victor and Ekon can. Well, he's gonna move out of the room. Okay. And. I. I'm kind of going under the assumption here that Ekon is, like, there and pops yeah. it, so he's going to take a swing at that square. All right, he's rolling at disadvantage. The thing is yep. unseen. Uh, that's two natural 20s. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Excellent. calm down. Oh my God. It's not, listen, you give us an NPC, and it, the NPC <laughs> is inevitably going to be the most competent person. <laughs> anyway, uh... That is 13 points of magical piercing damage. Okay. Second attack uh, is an 18 to hit. Ah, uh, that hits. That is 11 points of magical piercing damage. And the butt comes in for a 15 to hit. Uh, 15 also hits. Or 8 more magical bludgeoning damage. Okay. And is Orson moving or staying put? Yeah, Orson's, Orson's fine. Give a fuck. As Orson stands there, slashing the air in front of him with his spear, he doesn't feel any impact whatsoever. Nonetheless, blood sprays out against, in this case, against Ekans getting the brunt of it. But Genie's also getting a nice shower. Genie, you have Genie. blood again. It's just not yours. It's not <laughs> Genie's going to start collecting vials of blood. <laughs> she just licks it off of her arm. <laughs> like that's... Got uh, Evie with uh, Victor on deck. Evie, finish it. Be the guy. Evie has a 21 to hit the space. Did you roll a disadvantage? Oh, you're right. It does need to be a disadvantage. Uh, still 21. Okay, that's fine. That does hit. And she's dealing six points. Oh. And then she's going to offhand. Okay. Also a disadvantage. Uh, that's probably not going to hit. Yeah, that's only an 11. 11 does not hit. So the first time you bring your dagger down, you spray Edmund's boots with more blood, but the second just slashes through the air ineffectively. Uh, moving or staying put? Uh, I'll move here because... I do not want to get possessed and backstab somebody for a bajillion damage. Uh, no, but I, mean, I do have a reaction I can use against you. Okay. Did I get to roll an advantage? Uh, Evie, 
Uh-huh. I have a 21 to hit. That is going to hit. It's going to be six points of necrotic damage. Okay, I don't see that, so I can't have it, right? Correct. Okay, I take six points. And give me a constitution saving throw, please. Oh. God damn, why'd you move? Orson moved through its space. It didn't do anything. Orson he didn't, didn't leave, leave its threat, threat range. <laughs> okay. Uh, That's true. That is a uh, 10. A 10? Uh -huh. This is what we call an unforced error, ladies so, and gents. Ekin and Victor, you no longer perceive the red glow as being in the room. And Evie, you arrive back at the square that you intended to move to. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, so that would be Victor is up next. Evie, no! You can't see it. Yeah, you can. Victor, no, he's got a pretty good idea what happened. Victor was able to perceive that the glow left the room, uh, even amidst all the other light sources. Also, so Victor's just been dying to stab Evie the whole campaign. I mean, that's probably true. Victor will come up here behind Evie so everybody else can come and join in on the fun. <laughs> on the, the fun, he calls it. And he will stab Evie. That's not very nice. But I won't stop you. Um. So having looks on his shoulder, does that give him advantage? It does. No, no I'm going... I'm going to say Lux will not be your ally for the context of stabbing Evie. <laughs> it wouldn't give you advantage. Uh, that's, you a tw that's a 20. I'm sorry, Evie. <laughs> That's it's okay. just a D6. Is the it, rogues, The rogues are actually probably the best person Don't you... it's in the party to be... Uh... So how much damage? Well, Don't you want to see me roll all these dice? You can't... Oh. No. You try to kill me? You finally got enough of my shit? <laughs> Um, that's going to be 10 points of psionic damage. Uh, so, Evie, take 5 points of psionic damage. Okay. And then you violently vomit blood all over... Victor? <laughs> all over the front of you. Your pants and your shoes and the floor spattered in front of you. If she wants to, is she able to aim some of that at Victor? Yeah, that's fine. I mean, Victor Victor's already covered in blood as it is. It's like, oh, sure. We look like we stepped out of an Evil Dead movie. A little bit, yeah. And you no Let's longer never... perceive the red glow in the room. Alright, I am ordering everyone to never talk about this room ever again. This is the worst room we've come across in all of our adventures. Uh, I want to do a quick scan and see if there's any remaining magic in any of these three rooms. Uh, the curtains along these two mm -hmm. walls are magical in some sense. What secures them to the wall? They're... Uh, standard curtains, there's a sort of pole set up high into the walls near to the ceiling, such that they brush both the ceiling and the floor of the room. Okay. Do you want to bag those, Jeannie? Yeah, the curtains go in the bag. Those things seem extremely evil. Well, well it... the things were evil, but who knows about the curtains? Okay, so how about we, like, find out first? In the bag. I don't know. Victor, Victor's going to investigate the altars using his arcana. The bag is a problem for later. Checking the altar. It's a stone altar raised up off the floor, and the center of the altar has deep cracks in it. Deep enough that you could, with some work, you could work your dagger into it close to the hilt. However, there's no more light or magic emanating from them. Is there any iconography or anything in here? Uh, no, the statue itself has a plaque similar to what the first one did, naming naming the statue. Uh, Rania, Warden of the Northern Bank. Cousins, I need a break. Ne yeah. Next time, burn the curtains. Uh, well, if we take too much of a break the turret will go away yeah, so well, like, how a much of a break do you need? Back, so yeah do, oh yeah do you want like a short rest 
that what you're asking yes. for? Yes. Okay. I'm okay with that. No, I, I, we oh, I, got plenty of hit dice. I got plenty of hit dice. I just... I took a lot of damage in that fight. Uh, maybe camp out at the shore of the water. Yeah. To make I'm sure that nobody grabs here. the canoe. Yeah. Camp over by the canoe. Do you have any firewood still? Sheenie? No. No, we gave it all to the... Thing. I have a shopping list of things I need to put in my bag of holding when we get out of here. So a mirror taking, is on them. You're taking an hour to do a short rest? Yeah. Okay, go ahead and take the benefits of the short rests. Over the course of the hour, you notice that the frost and slush and crystals that you've left on the lake, uh, mostly along this northern wall here, None of which were caused by you pulling the canoe through the water, because the canoe is magic. But you watch as a lot of that slush recedes. Saying that it's melting back into water is the wrong word. It's more as though the water is simply reclaiming it. You know, think within another couple of hours, the lake will again be mirror shiny. Okay, so I have five hit. Roll three of these. 11 plus 16 plus 17. Yeah, that's just all of my hit dice, hit points. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I might as well just burn my last hit die as well. I'm not quite at the full yet. There we go. That puts me up to full. All seven D8 hit dice and my, and my D6 from Noble. Okay, so what's next? And Edmont is feeling a lot more hail. All right. Uh, do we want to do, wanna do the firebolt checks on the door in there? Well, first, I am going to use my noble slot, resummon my turret, and we're doing okay. the group. We're doing the group hug. Well, yeah. Uh huh. As you do. So. Uh. We're just holding. We're holding this hugging motion. <laughs> like. For it's a good solid like hug that takes twenty four seconds. <laughs> um, How much? We bagged both of those curtains, right? Yes, thirteen okay, just make sure. hit points for everybody. Once more right. into the breach. Once more into the breach. You cast detect mimic on the door, and the firebolt just impacts the door. And nothing else happens. Oh, so that's what detect mimic is. Okay. Yeah. Cool. yeah they spent the whole section, the whole session, attacking every door with firebolt. How many of them were mimics or had cubes in front of them, Brick? I think there were How many? Two, I think there were two cubes and I think there were three. Four. I think there mimics? were three total because we hit one cube and two mimics. I know that there was one doorway. This doorway here is just a wall with a mimic on either side of it, and you guys yeah. tried to open both. <laughs> no, no dude, Solitaire dude. was standing in front of one in an unrelated enemy encounter, and I decided to make it attack him. That was funny. This door, however, does not respond when you throw Firebolt at it. Does it respond if I try to open it? Yeah, it'll open. And it Light. reveals... A room on the other side. This room, similar to the hallway outside, also has several holes in the wall. At various heights. I think it's what only going to warm these, t these rooms, yeah. Uh... Still ice cold in here. However, you see in the far back right corner uh, what once would have been a relatively comfortable looking sleeping area. Uh, doesn't look very comfortable now because it's left to the ra ravages of time. And next to it is a dilapidated chair. On the left side of the room, however, you see a shelf upon which sits a variety of of shiny items. How many are magical? Uh, there are, is some magic. Amongst the items, you see a large quantity of coins. Uh, a, couple Bagger, flasks, in here. a couple of flasks containing some liquid. And a very large bound leather tome. Those the magic items? Victor will take the potions the and the tome are magical. Victor will take the tome. 
and I, look at it. Uh, please do not look at unknown magic items. Does it have a giant dead face on the front and wrapped human skin? No, it does not. In fact, it doesn't have any uh, letterings or iconography on the front at all. Uh, how many, just, just real quick, how many uh, unknown potions is that? Two. Oh, Actually, okay. they're not unknown. They're both potions of healing. Oh, okay. With blue dye in them. <laughs> Gen Genie, identify this later, but do uh, not open I have, it. I have both Evie and Genie as having no potions of healing. Do you, do you want yep. to split them? Yeah, yeah, I put them under there. Yeah, I'll oh, take I'd one. Happy to take one. Do you want me to take one then? It's Evie and Genie each got one. Yeah. Oh. Here are the other items okay. sitting on the shelf. There are a I large have have a... quantity of coins. I don't have a potion of healing, but yeah, it's fine. 3,574 pieces of silver. That's pretty good. 3,574. Uh, the coins themselves are in small, heavy chests laden down. 2,140 pieces of gold. 2,140. 129 pieces of platinum. 129. Yeah, it's a lot of coin. A nice variety of art objects worth 250 gold apiece. A bronze crown inlaid with gems. A gilded bird cage. A large gold bracelet that looks too large to be worn by a human. And a, a very smooth material... Uh, a small statue or figurine of a maiden. And at first you think it may be smooth metal or some kind of polished stone, but you realize it's made out of the same unmeltable ice as you've seen in the southern banks of the complex. And it's not magic at all? No, it's just made out of that, that ice. Interesting. Uh, can you paste that in the... Uh, chat so we can kind of write that in our I mean it's not even your birthday but yes yeah there you go and Victor is holding this large bound tome uh, so all of the money and art pieces so it's 250 gold pieces of art pieces in a addition to a crown, a birdcage. No, no, each a... of those pieces that I listed are worth 250 gold. Each. Gotcha. Each. Gotcha. Yeah. So that's 750 pieces of gold. No, that's a thousand. Yeah. So there's four of them. Yeah. 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 Okay, what's next? Well, at least this, at least this excursion wasn't uh, completely unlucrative. Yeah, we were running out of money. That's good. This is the biggest haul I think we've ever come across as a family. What's uh, this? Is this look like Gene, do you want to wanna clear way? that one out? Yeah, this hallway continues around to the left, into the next room. Yeah, I'll go into there. Don't let him be... Looking into this room, there's a strange crack in the floor. Jeannie, looking down to it, it just descends into depths unseen. It's widest at the far corner of the room here and narrowest right in front of you. So you could step across or just hop across this gap. The far side of the room looks like something catastrophic has happened and large ice crystals permeate along the walls, the floors, and the ceilings over there. You also see amidst these ice crystals the wreckage of what looks like a fairly what at one point was a very well equipped lab lots of shattered glass uh reams of copper piping and wire at one point this was uh, a, a, an alchemist would have taken great pride in this so you're just hopping over the abyss just nonchalantly oh, yeah yeah just hopping over the abyss to look at the the shattered lab as you do <laughs> and you Easy. hop over or genie what hmm? Slowly, carefully. There's nothing over here that can be salvaged, and the cold is indescribable. 
I think this might be where the cold came from, you guys. Yeah. You think an alchemist made a boo boo? Yeah. Is it coming from the crack? Most of the cold is coming from the ice crystals along the walls and floors where Genie and Victor are stabbing. Looking down okay. into the crack itself is just a hole descending into the earth. What's What's more distressing is how long it's persisted if it's been here for this long. Uh, hand me that pebble. Victor will take... Oh, I was going to use a torch, but yeah, that works. I'll drop a light pebble, toss it into the deepest part of the... Uh, widest part of the crack. And after a couple seconds, the light diminishes. Oh, so that's just a hole. Just a hole. I thought it, I thought it was like a... No, like no, a, a hole. Um, so I kind of was going to back up a bit, grab another piece of... I'm assuming there's more ruin in the floor here. I can grab another pebble. Lots of debris uh, in this room that you can yeah. pick up. Cast yes. light on it, give it to Lux, and have him fly down. And How far channel you, my sight through him. How far do you want to have him fly? For about a minute. And at the end of the minute, he's still descending into this hole. Does it get wider? Uh, it changes width here and there, okay. but it doesn't seem to open up into another cavern. It's just a crack descended into the earth. I can, I can make him disappear and reappear within a distance of me, so let's just go full dive bomb for another minute. Okay. Uh, oh. Full dive bomb. Let me think about this. How funny do I want it oh, to Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. 60 seconds, and he's flying like 40 feet around or something. Uh, I mean, you'd be dashing, so 80. I mean, in free fall, I think you get up to much higher speed than that. As he becomes aware. Uh, actually, you know, yeah, he's not in free fall, I'm assuming, because I'm assuming he wants to control this a little bit. But yeah, yeah, he wants to be able to fly around. He only has there. 40 feet of vision. 40 feet, yeah. He's flying faster than he can see. He's out. He's overdriving his headlights. <laughs> in other words so here's what happens yeah too late to do anything about it lux you become aware through lux's vision of mist welling up deep hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of feet in the bottom of this crack and it's too late for lux to pull up and he dive bombs directly into the mists and you lose the connection i'll relay that to my party don't fall in the hole, but if you do, maybe you don't die. Maybe that's how you get to another realm. So, you does need anybody, to get back over here now. Does anybody else think we should take some of this ice with us to like Genie. refrigeration purposes? So to be <laughs> clear, the little the figurine of the maiden that you found in this room in the treasure is made yeah. of this same icy material as you see in this lab. Right, and it's cold, I assume. Very, very cold, yes. But like I know, we could like make cold rooms with this. That would be I, That's actually not a bad idea, Jeannie. It's also not extremely bad... dangerous. Like it's for all we know, if we took a piece of this and threw it into the ocean, it would freeze the entire ocean. Then don't do that. <laughs> She's got a point. He does have a point. <laughs> like I guess I have no rebuttal to that. It's like, like, don't do the thing you're worried so, about. I mean, I originally thought we'd be like getting that staff and bringing it back. I could, you know, I could do mending on both of the hands, staff back. I don't know if that's going to do anything after. Well, we still though. have to check this over. Oh, here. that's true. There's, yeah. There's yeah, literally there. a Kurt Vonnegut novel that has this as a plot point. I guess we'll, well I guess our next goal, Rickard, is to get back in the canoe and go over here and pull the rocks down okay and as yeah. you pull the canoe over because more than an hour has elapsed things on this side of the lake are much more watery and much less slushy -y now yeah all right we gonna do the thing so how much rope do we actually have uh i have i have 50 feet i have 50 feet i have 50 feet i think that's more than enough squares to cover that much distance what do you think yeah that's 50 feet is 10 squares. 50, gets us to Ed, 50 feet gets us to Edma. What's the goal? You're going to fix the rope around the rods and then Yank. pull them from back here to cause a rock slide, but the idea being that nobody's in the hallway to get crushed? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah, after a few moments of work, who's going up to actually do the attaching? That sounds like a Victor kind of job. Yeah, Victor will go. Okay. Yeah, Victor... 
uh, remember, you're climbing up a lot of this. The stairs are incredibly steep. Like, they're more ladder-like towards the end. But you find the two rods, and you loop the rope around them and get a good tight knot going. And you make sure that the rope's not snagged any on anything as you snake it back through the hallway. All right, let's get, let's get clear. Orson, we need you. Is Orson <laughs> doing the yanking? Yeah, Orson will do the yanking. And the first couple yanks, I mean, you just see the tension on the rope and the third one you see the rope goes slack and a few moments later you hear crumbling and falling and crashing somewhere far up ahead and yeah you just see a few pebbles and debris roll down oh wow out of the stairway I figured there'd, figured it'd be more a little bit more spectacular than that well all the spectacular the... stuff happened further up so okay, we're, we're going to see the remnants of the spectacular stuff. So at this point, you have an opening all the way to the top as the rocks have fallen away and come to settle little niches along the side. And you can see the moonlight streaming in from above. And you have an opening. It's still fairly narrow, but it's wide enough that you could squeeze through it. And at the top of the second length of stairs, the ones that you're climbing kind of hand over fist getting up there, you realize that you see frozen tree roots and earth instead of stone. Good news, guys. We don't have to go back. It's just... We'll see if we can poke us out. But there was that large, there was that large fellow that we needed to check on. No. Yeah, we probably should go check on him. So you're not. We think this is actually uh, new worn. Just, just so you know, McDull, that that large fellow is a uh, giant of some kind, a, a evil, chaotic evil giant of some kind that, like, wants to murder and eat us. And he, has had frostbite caused the loss of all of uh, his remedies. So but he yeah. was reasonable. Are you guys going back for the giant, or are you climbing out here? I my vote is no giant. I'd really like for us to go back to the giant. We, we've killed uh, enough things. We should save something. I agree, but I don't think we should bring him back to the village. I, should, we, I think we should give him the canoe, unless we're going to bring him with, with us. No, I, I think we should, we should... Why don't we see what's up here, and then if it's not the village, we can get the giant and tell him this is the way out. Sure. Uh, that's fine with me. So Victor's climbing out of the hole? Yeah. Yep. So Victor, there's a few feet of earth through which you can see gnarled and frozen tree roots. And then a good six or eight inches of snowfall on top of that. But where you climb out is from an open grave into a moonlit cemetery that you are not familiar with. Your shutters. Looking up at the sky here, it's the same sky as you've been sleeping under for the better part of a year at this point. You recognize the Darkenese moon in the proper phase and the proper stars. The weather, once you get up, is cold, but not supernatural ice cave cold. It's just the dead of winter and Darkon cold. So, Victor, you come up. through an open grave. It's a very old cemetery around you, and you've traveled a considerable distance underground through the complex and then rowing across this open lake. But this cemetery is too large and too close to Silverbow to have escaped your notice. Yeah, I was about to ask that. <laughs> and you hear faint weeping nearby from behind one of the tombstones. Victor will go search for the weeping. Tell everybody to come up. It doesn't take long as you come around one of the other rows. And the tombstones here, a lot of them are badly in bad repair. Some of them are absolutely ancient. Some of them are younger, but still very, very old. And all of them bear the same archaic Darkenese scripts as you saw down below. The source of the weeping is your friend the ghost boy sitting behind one of the tombstones over here. And when he sees you approaching, he stands and wipes the tears away from his face with the back of his hand. It's 
So, you want to tell us what that was? And he motions back to the hole they crawled out of. And he says that it's an old place, and he thinks he may have known it when he was alive. And he thinks that... I think a part of me still lives there. And that's why I'm making them all sick, isn't it? Well, quite possible. We, we killed a bunch of stuff down there, so you might not make anyone sick anymore. And he looks up as though to read approval on you. Does anybody amongst you actually believe that? I don't think I do. I think, no, I don't. I don't believe it either, honestly. So Victor's trying to give an encouraging uh, op piece of optimism, but that's not what uh, Poba the Ghost Boy is reading on anyone's face. I mean, Victor thinks it's true. <laughs> I have to it, go away, don't I? I? I think it's too early to tell. So where is the other piece of you that is making the, uh, people sick? Do you know? And he shakes his head and chokes back a sob. There, There's a way we could find out. We could play the game. I mean, after everything in there, a, a game seems nice. 